Dame Kitty Tenakoi. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Happy birthday. Not yet. It's it's looming. Three, looming. Yeah, a couple of days away. Yes. How, how are you? Someone who? <laughs> what 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 does this milestone mean to you? Well, I, I got here. For that's a, a start. You know, it's like sort of the engine's on, and I'm at the lights, and I'm ready for go. <laughs> I'm here. So I, I can't imagine that I got to age eighty. This is quite unbelievable. I thought seventy was bad enough. Now we're at eighty. It's not bad. So I'm, I'm aiming. I'm aiming for another one. I'm aiming for. A few you, more. you look incredibly fit and vibrant and healthy and everything for eighty. It must be that uh, northern. It must be the northern air. Do you think? Must be. Yes. Yeah. Do, are you someone who? Um, do you get at all philosophical around these kind of kinds of milestones? Do you find yourself reflecting on things? No, because they've, life gets, goes so quickly mm. and another year comes by and another March comes by and then there's another one. And I just sort of think, well, here it is again. It's, it's, it's popped up. I've just emailed someone in England. Here it comes. Here it comes. <clears throat> and it doesn't really worry me too much. The only thing that would worry me if I suddenly became very ill and then I have to cope with all of that and people around me coping. I think I don't really want to be ill. I just decide to sort of disappear and not bother anybody. But as time is going on, I'm happy, I'm healthy, and I just keep going and, and don't, don't wait for him. For any trouble. Dare I ask how you will celebrate your birthday? I'm going fishing with my husband. Very good. We're going to try and get to, out on the boat. I was going to, the whole month of February was going to be mine and my husband's. We were going to do everything together. None of it's worked. Oh, why is that? Well, the roofer came and the roofer didn't come. Then the, the uh, glass <laughs> the roofer man never came. comes. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and then the, um, the glass man is going to come, which is a blessing. Then the carpet cleaning was delayed by three days. So that all the stuff went out on the terrace. So the carpet cleaning, hooch, she's amazing. So all these different things. Then something else comes and something breaks down and da da. It's just like that. So the whole month of February just went swoosh. What will you be fishing for? It doesn't matter. I just go fishing. It doesn't matter. But basically, just for the table, we, we just get enough of the table what do you enjoy about it about the fishing i think just being on the water because i'm i'm you know pisces my husband's aquarius so we're, we're water people you're water people yes very much water people will you have a cake uh oh never thought of that never thought of that one are you a cake person uh well if i'm trying to stay a reasonable weight i prefer not to you can, it's your birthday. It's your 80th birthday. You've got to have a sliver, a wafer thin. No one's, piece. no one's, no one's giving me cakes at the moment. So I'll just be happy if I don't get one. It's fine. But my big thing is ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. I'll eat. I could eat a whole pot of ice cream at one go. Oh, you and I are aligned on oh, this front. Yeah. Yes. What? What? Do you have an ice cream of choice? Is there a? Uh, well, I like chocolate, but I do. I do like the hokey pokey. Oh yeah. It's my, always my favorite. Yeah. No, I totally agree. I'm with you on that. <laughs> How is it being home? Back, I know you've been here a couple of years now, but but that decision to move home and to settle in the Bay of Islands, do, do, do you feel it has been the right decision? Do you feel vindicated in that decision? The quick answer is yes, the quick answer. Yeah. The other answer is don't go there. We, we, you know, you make decisions. Uh, we did it, and we're pleased we've done it. I've left an awful lot of my heart behind. I'm very homesick for England, and, and you know, because I lived there, there for more more than fifty years. But home is here, and I am thoroughly enjoying all the different things about New Zealand, which I never knew about. Like, people don't give way to you in traffic. Um, people don't do this. <laughs> How did you this. not know about that? <laughs> <laughs> because in England you do, because yeah. you know they're terribly they're polite and stuff, so they don't do that. There's a whole lot of little things that people don't do or do do that are nice. Sometimes they're it's wonderfully friendly. Just wonderfully friendly and very giving. Um, and those are the, the lo lovely things that I'm enjoying. Was it a difficult decision to choose to come back? It was a fast decision because of COVID. Right. And we we were looking at it and thinking, this is this is horrendous. It's getting worse. Everyone's, you know, and we were glad we, we didn't get it. We have had COVID now, but um, <clears throat> I'm still sort of have the residue of coughing up stuff from COVID. Oh, right. uh, but it doesn't matter. We're back and we're thoroughly enjoying. The house needed a lot of attention. It was rather neglected, but a lot of it's done. Our huge 500-year-old tree fell down, so we've oh. had to cut that all up, which is really, really sad. Fell on the house, so that was, you know, eight months of telling the insurance company, well, you know, it's done a lot of damage. But the house is looking beautiful. I've got my tomatoes, my cucumbers. I've got all the different things I want, flowers and stuff. So I'm happy. I'm really happy. But I'm, I'm missing England. Yeah, that's very understandable mm. given all of your friends and connections yes, in, yes. In, in England. Mm. Do you find too that being in New Zealand and having the separation that comes from being here, which is both a blessing and a curse, 
do you find yourself reflecting on on your career anymore? Do you find it, having that separation makes you, you know, a little bit more yeah, reflective on, on other parts of your life? I, I don't look back too much because mm. there's so much went on. You know, it, 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 my, my career, everything about my life was at, you know, it's sort of mega speed. And then you get to this stage where it took me a long time to not do a schedule. It took me several years to calm down and not have to think, well, I've got to get my dresses and my you know, flights and all the different things. That took a long, that took about two or three years to calm down and about a year to sort of say that I'm not going to sing again, things like that. But it, it's best not to look back. It's always best to look forward. And that's why I think, that's why I feel as though I'm, I'm healthy and happy by going forward all the time. Do you sing at all? Yes. When and where? In the car. What do you sing to? Barry White. <laughs> Barry White. <laughs> I love Barry White. Yeah. No, I don't sing with him, no, but I, I like Barry White. I sort of plonk along with Barry White. And, all, and then I have the orchestral pieces I love and all that sort of thing. But what What would be the most modern music you listen to? Oh, well, you, you, you can imagine I've got thousands of sounds in my head, thousands of recordings in my head. But Amy Winehouse is the one that I pl- she's, she's really good. And my little grandson, we, we, he loves to dance to the Nigerian funeral dances. Have you seen that? No. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Just, he dances to we We put the boom boxes on and we dance all over the terrace and in the house <laughs> and jump all over the sofas at this Nigerian funeral dance. I think I, I might be incorrect. They've, they've got a coffin on their shoulders. Right. They're six or eight and, and they're doing this dance. They go right down flat and they want the coffin and up again and up again. I thought <laughs> it's the most amazing thing and it really swings at six o'clock at night with the sun going down. We're dancing to this music. This is you and Luther, your grandson. Yes, yes. We're you, all you, doing You it. participate in this. <laughs> yes, yes. Ha- he loves it. <laughs> How how on earth were either of you introduced to the style of dancing? I have dancing? no idea. We've just it just popped up, and there's a film of it, and uh, he just loves it. We put it on every night, it's, it's, and uh, and then there's the sea shanty song of the the boat and the sea shanty that we love that one too. Everything's to dance to on the terrace. How is it being home with your grandson? It's fun. It's fun. He's he's. Um, you know, children are different. Every child is different, and he has many interests. And some of them are strange uh, because we can't understand them. Nigerian and, funeral songs. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and then some are some are exciting. And he's always coming up with. He's only coming up to be six. And he looked at me last night. And he said, "You know, I'm not six yet." <laughs> so I said, "Well, I know that we're coming. We're getting there." And then he 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 uses the word actually, which I think is rather nice. And he says, "Yes, not a year." That's Which really I think is rather nice. He's doing much better than me. Yes. In what context does he use actually? In every way. Actually grandpa, actually mama or grandma, actually. It's always actually. So he's, he's a lovely little boy. Does he have an appreciation of your talents? He has no knowledge of it. Isn't that lovely in a way? Yes, yes. Isn't that lovely? It's, yeah. Yes. It, it just comes through the door and I get a big hug and we've, we're on our way and he's telling Grandpa that he doesn't want to be in the choir because it's in his break time and he wants to be with his friends and the choir's all girls anyway. <laughs> Is he in the he choir? He sings, he sings. Does he? He's got a beautiful little voice, yeah. I, I was hoping that they might sort of pick him up and do something, but he said, it's all girls, Grandma, it's all girls. What, did you, what were you hoping they would do to him? Well, just let him sing. Mm. He was singing Happy Birthday, it must have been too. My husband, because my husband just had a birthday, and uh, it was in tune, completely in tune. I was amazed. That must be so special for you I know. to see that. Yeah. So I, I don't quite know what to do about it, but I don't want to sort of discourage him. You don't want to discourage him. You want to encourage him, but he's obviously going to feel a weight of expectation it's, as he it's gets in his a break bit time. older. He said he'd, it's quiet practice <laughs> in the break time. I don't want to do that. I think for what it's worth, <laughs> you should just put a little bit of pressure on him, a little bit of loving pressure on him. Make we'll get, sure he we'll does get it. Get him singing at the piano and see what he'll do. Yeah. yeah. Did you watch the coronation last I year? I did. I did. How was that for you? Watching oh, that? lovely. Because, you know, the Queen was with us for a very long time and uh, all of my life, basically. And, of course, you know, having a little connection with him, His Majesty was rather nice and just watching was good. It, it, um, for those of us who don't have connections, you, you feel as though you are observing history in those moments yeah, yeah. And, and everything <clears throat> with the royal family last year from the Queen's passing to, to the coronation. You must have a much, much, you know, another dimension in that experience. Yes, but I, but I suppose I look at what the press says and I look at what I've seen, you know, being very, very up close. And, and I thought, well, I don't know how they get these stories out or with somebody telling funny stories. But what I've seen in the royal family and the time, I, the little time I spent with them, it's they're, they're very ordinary people. They, 
you know, we discuss all sorts of things. Um, we don't discuss the wrong things. And if there is a discussion of it, you know, it's it's we just you know, put it aside and, and never disc- never talk about it the elsewhere. About the, the royal family definitely say yes rather yes. than yeah, yes. don't they? Uh, yeah, it, it it did feel as though we were we were sort of watching history. Yes, and yes. and um, we have felt like that with you many times over the years. I don't suppose you know who used to do this program before me. It was Sir Paul Holmes, and there was one moment I was hoping I could be very cheeky and ask you about. That was the time that you and Sir Paul Holmes had a cheeky snog on camera. Do you remember? Oh no, that? He, he pushed his way into me. Did, did he? Oh, he's terrible. Did he's, he really? He's a shocker. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> no, I think we just. I, well, I, th- I think it was me actually, wasn't it? If, if, the, the, if the camera's true, the, it was me. Did the, 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 you know they throw that term iconic around very you know too all too often? And, but that was a truly iconic television moment. I yes, think. yes. Yeah. Well, the time we, he came to London and we had a chat, I, I remember we were at the, the apartment I had at the time mm. and someone had fired a, an air gun across the top of us from, from the apartment I was in. And then suddenly this, we heard the ch- straight across. And we, and goodness. I know, yeah. we got the fright. I've got a real fright. Yeah. But he, was, he and I was talking on the terrace and we heard this thing happen. Which wasn't nice. That's yeah. That's that's quite frightful. Just young people being a bit silly. I that's think. it. That's yes. it. So aside from your grandson, talk to us about the Kiri Te Kanama Foundation and how it is progressing at the moment. And the young talent you see in New Zealand. We well, there's a lot of wonderful talent and a lot of Samoan singers coming through now because you know they have a history of mm. of music, which is really lovely. They have wonderful choirs that. If you've ever heard all those beautiful uh, sings, it's amazing. Singing, it's, it is yeah. gorgeous, isn't it? We don't. I don't think we have that in the Maori culture. We have um, the ones on the Maori, but they don't. It's not quite like the, the, the Samoans do. So I think that's why they've been quite quite successful. But the foundation is, is we're trying to help a lot of people, and we, also we do with the foundation. We also help some some of the covers at uh, Covent Garden as well, which gives us a profile, but also it helps. We've had a lot of great successes and some people getting covers go straight on to, to get major roles at Covent Garden. But so one singer to today, I think he's actually performing in the um, in Paris, it's Filippo, who was, I was at the competition, he was he won in Barcelona just a few months ago um, and he's singing in, in Paris and my friend has gone to, to see him. They're singing in Glyndebourne and Salzburg, and they're all over the place. They're all doing extremely well, having come out of the COVID situation, yeah. which I'm so pleased. But we've we've helped them a lot, and it's a lovely little group now that we've been sort of really mentoring and and caring for because they needed that sort of moment of you know help, help, help. And we had a psychologist come in for a while because they were they were being really affected by no work, mm. no work, couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do anything. One of the wonderful singers went online and was teaching English at, I think, 18 pounds an hour. That's how bad things were. So we, the foundation supported them for several months uh, in the year to, to try and just give them money to live. Mm. So we did that. So I was very proud of, of um, my trustees, England and here, to, to decide to, get to help them. Is there any way you would sing in public again? No. Why not? Uh, best not to go there. Okay. You know, the past is the past. And I always think the people who come back sort of, you know, you regret it. And you should never because my, use, my voice used to be very beautiful um, when it was trained well. But now I don't train at all. I don't work at it. So even if I tried to train, it would take me months and months to get my voice to anything near what I would like it to mm. be. So it's just best to leave it, go to sleep and, and let's enjoy the, the youth of today. Well, with that in mind, uh, I hope you can enjoy this week. I hope once you get back and off the water, you can celebrate with a small bowl of ice cream. Sounds good to yeah, me. And congratulations. I will enjoy it. I will yeah. enjoy it. Well, thank you so much for giving us thank your time. You. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you very much.